Tonight on Whip City Weekly, the Postal Board of Governors is looking to raise the price of stamps. All the details on that here. It's a musical with a lot of meaning. Find out what the show the WSU Music Guild will be performing this month. And our very own Mike Drew is back with another edition of Whip City Sports. Thank you for tuning in to Whip City Weekly. I'm Samantha Minier. And I'm Dave Langlois. Massachusetts lawmakers are considering a bill that would raise a legal dropout age from 16 to 18 years old. The bill has been, the bill has been considered once before, but did not receive a vote from the full legislature before the end of the voting session. They are also considering only raising the dropout age in the cities of Boston and Lawrence. Mohegan Sun got approval from the Massachusetts Gaming Commission for its initial application for a casino license. It was also approved for a bid to build a building nearly $1 billion in Palmer. Voters are set to hit the polls November 5th to decide the fate of the casino. If the casino is approved, it will com be completed with the already approved $800 million MGM casino off I-91 in Springfield to be the lone casino in Western Mass. Many potential employers came out to Westfield State earlier this week for the school's career fair. I attended this event to find out what it's all about. This is Samantha Minier here at the 18th Annual Criminal Justice Career Fair, which, don't be misled by the name, it's open to all sorts of majors, not just criminal justice. We'll go to the first, the Associate Director of Career Fairs, Giselle Abam. So we actually have careers and internships, part-time jobs for students in psychology, sociology, social work, communication, business. I mean, there really are a lot of opportunities for students from a lot of different backgrounds. So it's not just for criminal justice students. I graduated from Westfield State in 2009. Uh, afforded me the opportunity um, for, with this career for actually to get in touch with Delaware and different agencies. Uh, Delaware actually was hiring right away and the first to scoop me up. So. From the U.S. Marshals to the Delaware Police Department, it was a diverse group here today at the career fair. This is Samantha Muneer, here with Whip City Weekly, back to you in the studio. The Postal Board of Governors is looking to raise the price of first class stamps by three cents. This is the latest attempt in helping to solve some of the post office's financial challenges. Congress has been working on other moves that would cut costs, including ending Saturday mail delivery. The proposed changes have been resisted by many lawmakers and postal worker unions. If the rate proposal is accepted, the increase would take effect January 26th. Mass Live and the Republican newspaper are holding their seventh annual <coughs> fall photo contest this month. From now until October 20th, photographers from all over the region are encouraged, are encouraged to submit their best fall photos via an entry form from MassLive.com. Once the entries are voted on by a panel of judges, the top seven picks will be featured on the front page of the Republican newspaper over the span of a week in November. When we return, running for a cause, we have two races that may interest you. Westfield's class of 2014 has made a big donation. All the details on that here. We take a look at Westfield's most recent blood drive. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, so wait, but don't know it's how. October, See, so no one here's gonna help you. No one Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Yes, go! Yes, yes! yes. yes. Oops. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Many WSU students went out and donated blood this week. Whip City Weekly's May Randall spoke with some of the volunteers. 
We're here at the WSU Blood Drive today at Parenzo Gym talking to students about their experiences donating blood for the Red Cross. What motivated you to donate blood today? Um, I've done it before, uh, twice before, and I don't really mind needles, so it's not a big deal for me. So how do you feel knowing that today you could possibly be saving someone's life? Uh, I guess it makes me feel good. Um, I think it's an easy thing to do to possibly save someone's life, and anyone can do it. So, Samantha, what motivated you to donate blood today? Well, I've donated blood before, and just the idea that it saves three lives is a great idea, and I just want to be able to help people, so. And are you nervous at all for the procedure? A little bit. I mean, I'm used to it, but at the same time, it's still nerve-wracking. <laughs> How did you hear about the blood drive that was going on today? Uh, I was getting some food down in D.C., and they had the little stand set up where you can sign up, and I just signed up. Did you do anything special to prepare for today's blood drive? Uh, you know, good night's nice rest, plenty of fluids, and that's about it. How do you feel about the turnout today at the blood drive? I thought it was, it is very good, and it's going to continue to be very good. Mostly people come in after dinner, and we've had over 100 people come in so far, so it's going to be a very good turnout, and I'm excited for it. Has it been mostly students that have come today, or have some administrators come in as well? There's been administrators, there's been students, there's been people that are retired, there's been all types of people from all different genres, and they're all trying to save a life. In the U.S., every year, over 9 million people donate blood. When was the last time you donated? For Web City Weekly, I'm May Randall. WSU Athletics is teaming up with English professor Vanessa Diana to organize a 5K race benefiting Stanley Park. The event is called Run Stanley and will take place rain or shine on Sunday, November 17th in Stanley Park itself. The event includes prizes to overall and age groups, male and female, winners, music, and a guided nature walk through the sanctuary trails. All fun raises will go towards helping rebuild two of the park's bridges that were damaged by recent storms. You can still sponsor, volunteer, or even participate in this great event. For more information, visit www.runstanley.com. Springfield Fire Department is doing more than just fight fires this October. They are forming their very own team for the Rays of Hope walk and run towards the cure for breast cancer. The idea came from Lourdes Garcia, wife of Lieutenant Edward Garcia. A survivor of breast cancer herself, Garcia says how important it is for the community to come together. The firefighters are selling pink t-shirts designed specifically for their team and are, have already sold 200. The Rays of Hope Walk is the most successful walk run that supports breast cancer in Western Mass. It takes place on October 20th this year in both Springfield and Greenfield. It took two years of fundraising, but the Westfield State University class of 2014 has made a $6,000 donation to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. The foundation grants wishes to children with life-threatening medical, medical conditions. To date, the class has donated $8,000 and is hoping to make two children's wishes come true by graduation. It was a big week for Westfield State University and New England sports. When we come back, Mike Drew will tell you all that happened. And WSU's Music Theater Guild has a new play coming your way. Can you guess what it is? Stay tuned. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are, they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult, and speak up. And do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Whip City Sports. I'm Mike Drew. The Westfield State Football Owls improved to 3-1 last Saturday with a 31-0 romp at Plymouth State. 
Senior quarterback Tim Rich led the impressive performance for the Owl offense, going 11 of 13 passing for 245 yards and a touchdown. But once again, the real story, as it has been all season long, was the Owl defense. In this victory, the Owl D held Plymouth State to just 105 yards of total offense, and senior defensive back Joey Schistler came up with a key interception late in the first half that directly led to a Westfield touchdown and a comfortable 17-0 halftime lead. The win was the first over Plymouth State in 11 career meetings for the Owls. They now sit at 3-1 overall and 2-0 in MassCAC conference play. Speaking of that, the Owls will host rival Framingham State this Saturday at 1 p.m. in what is suddenly a marquee matchup. Matt Stover and I will have the call for you from Alumni Field on www.masscac.tv. Well, it was also a pleasant Saturday for both Westfield soccer teams in their matchups with Mass Maritime. The men collected a 2-1 overtime road victory as senior midfielder Dan Brady scored both goals, including the game winner. Timely goals have their benefits as the clutch performance led to Brady being selected as the MassCAC Men's Soccer Co-Player of the Week. Meanwhile, the Westfield women obtained a 5-2 win over the Maritimers in which sophomore midfielder Kelsey Murray and junior midfielder Sarah Sipek each scored two goals. Their persistence paid off as the Owls racked up 61 shot attempts as a team for the game. The ladies will return to action this Saturday in a conference tilt at Salem State. Moving on now, Tom Brady's 52 consecutive games with at least one touchdown pass came to an end last Sunday when the Bengals defeated the Patriots 13-6. He was two touchdown passes shy of tying Drew Brees' record at 54, that being Brady. Brady's 16.8 quarterback rating in that game is his worst since week 14 of the 2006 season. With the win, the Bengals handed the Patriots their first loss of the season. Brady's surely going to need a better rating than that this week because the Patriots host the unbeaten New Orleans Saints. Look for the return of all-world tight end Rob Gronkowski in this one. Finally tonight, the Red Sox road to redemption continues. The Sox marched on into the American League Championship Series with a 3-1 victory over the Tampa Bay Rays in Tuesday night's Game 4 to clinch a division series victory. Koji Uehara closed things out with a gutsy four-out save just one night after surrendering a walk-off home run to Rays catcher Jose Lobatone in Game 3. Now either the Detroit Tigers or the Oakland A's will stand in the way of a World Series appearance for the Red Sox. Those two teams will have a Game 5 in Oakland on Thursday night to determine a series winner. While the result of that one is uncertain, one thing is for sure, Game 1 of the ALCS takes place Saturday night at Fenway Park. It's a hit musical that taught us how many minutes there are in a year, and it's at Westfield State. Felicia Hopkins has a story. Anticipations are running high as the first performance of Westfield State University's Student Music Theater Guild is fast approaching. Dover Stage, which is in Parenzo Hall, is hosting many performances this year. Um, I am one of the directors of Rent. Um, Rent is set in the 90s. Um, it's a group of friends that are trying to figure out how to deal with um, their lives with that. And there's, a, there's love and friendship and um, sadness and death too. So they kind of go through a lot of phases in their life in this play. Rent will have a live band playing during the performance. There will be an assortment of musicians playing in the pit. As a music director, my job is to conduct the pit um, and the singers on stage and also to teach them all of their music for the show. Yeah. Um, during the show, I'm going to be backstage conducting everybody, making sure they come in on their entrances because there's going to be a, a little TV at the front of the stage that they can see me in. Um, so my job is to make sure the show actually keeps going. Rehearsals have begun as opening night emerges on October 17th. The directors and the cast are preparing just as much for the event. Students at Westfield State and community members are encouraged to attend these campus events and show support. For Whip City Weekly, I'm Felicia Hopkins. Rent will be playing at 7.30 p.m. from October 17th through the 19th. Well, that does it for this episode of Whip City Weekly. I'm Dave Langlois. And I'm Samantha Minier. Take care, Westfield. Bye.